Hello and welcome to the Behind Closed Doors podcast. My name is Alicia Abberley and I'm so grateful that you've joined us in this space. Behind Closed Doors is all about the types of conversations that we only usually have with our best friend, our partner, our counsellor, our coach. And sometimes it's the conversations that we don't actually have with anybody else at all. The women that are interviewed in this space are all women that are making a difference to the planet. They're women that are inspiring and empowering. The intention is that you too will feel inspired and empowered by these conversations. So grab a cup of your favorite drink, pop your feet up and enjoy this episode of Behind Closed Doors. Today's guest helps women break the cycle of sabotaging their efforts to live a healthy life by removing all of the frustration, confusion and guesswork. She is passionate about taking her clients on a powerful journey of self-discovery to ignite a new mindset combined with knowledge to choose the foods that are right for them, free from guilt, free from restriction and not a food plan in sight. Today's guest is passionate about women feeling empowered and confident in their eating and lifestyle choices, all whilst loving what they see in the mirror. Hello and welcome, Danny Strong. Hi, Alicia. How are you? Yeah, really awesome. Good. This is um, a topic that we haven't covered off yet. Um, Exciting. Done, yeah, it is really exciting. So I have done an interview with another beautiful girl who is in the fitness industry, mm-hmm. uh, but we are going to be touching on some different things today, which is yeah, really exciting. Absolutely. So we are going to talk about why diets don't work. We are going to look at how to overcome sabotaging your healthy efforts. And that's a big one for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, love it. I read something that you wrote and it was about um, how when we feel like we can't have something, how Oof. we want it. How we want yeah. to, that's me totally. <laughs> it's the elephant in the room. It's like, I'm not allowed that. Oh my God, I need it now. <laughs> Absolutely. I just did an eight day retreat and, um, li- and um, while we were there, the food was just incredible. I- I've never eaten food like it. And mm. as soon as I came home, I was just like, I need junk. Like I just need, I want junk. It's <laughs> amazing. Like, yeah. Because it was, yeah. Cause I didn't have it. And then I did a yeah. week- weekend retreat as well. And mm-hmm. the lead into the weekend retreat was, um, we had to do five days of healthy eating before. And then at the retreat, it was all full healthy food and so Mm -hmm. I know my pattern I actually ate KFC that night like I really just went out and I don't eat fast food very often yeah Um, but it was like I just had that need to Mm. um felt like it to to comfort eat so I'm looking looking forward to discussing that with you me too uh and then we've got what is living with vitality and also Mm. the anchor of desire Mm. yeah very exciting All right. Well, let's dive with the first one. Why do diets not work? Well, I think we can all answer that because how many of us have been on a diet that have lasted their whole life? No. We just fall off the wagon. So when we keep restricting ourselves, when we do the paleo diet or the ketogenic diet or the lemon detox or the cabbage soup diet, these are all things that are so not sustainable. So no wonder that by day two, we're like, give me that goddamn chocolate cake or whatever it is that we are craving because it's not something that we can sustain. You know, the the only time that I've seen it work is if we are going away on a holiday and we want to get into a swimsuit or summer clothes and for two weeks, we literally eat a lettuce leaf a day and we're miserable, but we get there, (laughs) but we cannot, uh, we cannot maintain that kind of eating because it's not sustainable as I keep coming back to so the biggest thing for me is that when women come to me and say I need a food plan I need to drop six kilos I need to do this this and this I said well you've come to the wrong woman because I don't do food plans and they're like why because you're going to be following another diet so instead of which we look at a whole day in the life of whoever it is that I'm wanting to help and that needs my help and then I start guiding So for example, you like pancakes for breakfast. Let's change them into protein pancakes. We'll take out the flour. We'll add coconut flour. We'll do coconut yogurt, for example, and we'll create a healthier version. So you're not having to give up your beloved pancakes. And so it carries on down the week. And then another big thing is not restricting and dieting. So if you've got a birthday, an anniversary, a celebration, a work promotion, go out and eat that slice of cake and have those two or three glasses of champagne. 
but then wake up the next day and then get back into your healthy eating. And it's not then going, oh, well, you know, I've just had a shit night of food. I'm just going to carry on the next day, the next week, the next month, the next however long eating in a way that doesn't serve our highest self. So it's really finding that balance, which is why diets for me, waste of time, miserable. I like, um, yeah, I like the way that you do that, like with the pancakes where you explained it. That's a really smart idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's because another thing with dieting is that very often it's things that we don't enjoy eating. So why the hell would we want to put something in our mouth when eating is such a joy, food is delicious, why do we want to make it revolting? So that to me says diet. So keep the things that you love, just tweak it, change it slightly to become healthier. Yeah, sometimes we get so stuck in how things are supposed to be, right? Mm. It's like, just even that, I never thought of that. So yeah, interesting. That's such an interesting thing, isn't it? Supposed to, should, shouldn't, can't, mustn't, not allowed. Oh my God, those words just need to be eradicated from vocabulary, I reckon. <laughs> I agree with you. Too I'm... much pressure. Uh, yeah, and I guess if, if anything from this, that, that's a really key point, right? Take the pressure off yourself. Mm. That's it. And especially as women, especially the women that I work with, they're busy, they're rocking it in their jobs, they could be mums with children. They are smashing every area of their life. And when they come to themselves, they put even more demands on themselves. And I mustn't do this, I mustn't have this one, I've got to get to the gym, I've got to do this, I've got to read this book, I've got to do this podcast. Oh my God, calm the fuck down. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just chill out a little bit. Just calm down and give yourself that space to breathe. I, I think I did a Facebook Live the other day asking why we had to get so busy and that it's okay to, you know what, remove that Wonder Woman cape. It gets a bit grabby sometimes. Put it through the wash because when you put it back on, it's all shiny and new and you're feeling amazing again. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. That's a, I think it's shifting. Well, I feel like it's shifting. Unless it's just, mm. unless it's just the people I see now. Uh, what I noticed though is that maybe it's an elevation in consciousness as well, that it, women are realizing this women are learning that they don't have to uh, base their value on working hardcore and that's it constantly getting shit done um i think yeah i think there's so many different avenues now that are opening up for women to see that it's okay for us to just be and it's okay for us to yeah to take the pressure off ourselves Uh, in regards to the eating my dad says um, he studied naturopathy and he said that, you know, you do more damage by what you think about your food than what you actually eat. A hundred percent. That actually just gave me shivers because our body is energy and we listen and we hold on to every little thought that goes through our mind. So I've got some chocolate in the fridge and I probably will have a square in bed watching a film tonight and that's okay. And it's going to be one square. But imagine it if I had that chocolate and then I felt guilty for it. And so then I went back to the fridge because I felt guilty to placate my guilty feeling. And then that vicious circle starts. And then I berate myself the next day and I try and starve myself, but it doesn't happen. So I berate more and eat more. Oh my gosh, what stress are we putting on ourselves? So when we lift it and go, do you know what? I really feel like a piece of chocolate tonight, not for any other reason, not because I've had a terrible day, not because I've had an argument with my partner, not because I'm just feeling shit. But because I feel like some, I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to hold on to anything. Yeah, hallelujah to that. Yes. Beautiful. All right, any, anything else you want to share in that space, Danny? No, I think we pretty much covered it. I think you can see how passionate I am yeah. about how <laughs> diets do not work. Get off them. Stop restricting. Yeah. I Actually, no, I do have one more point. Because as you said at the beginning of our conversation, it's when you, don't, when you deny something, when you don't allow it, that's the one thing you go to. So imagine if you lift all of that restriction and you really thought about what you wanted, you probably wouldn't rush to KFC or go and get your chocolate or ice cream. You would wait until you really, really wanted some and go and enjoy. So it's lifting to just be free. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. All right, so let's go into... Oh, actually, I have one other thing there to add. Yes. <laughs> There's... Um, I, I have mentioned this before that... And I, I don't know if it was yeah, here in a podcast or if it was um, on Facebook, um, that I started ingesting coconut oil. Uh, mm. got, got on the Miranda Kerr bandwagon a couple of years back. And when I was... I was doing teaspoons of it just for healthy yeah. hair. said healthy hair and healthy body, healthy neck. 
healthy skin. So I started doing that and I found that my body just, it was not liking it at all. It just, mm. yeah, it just was really uncomfortable with it. So I did a little bit of research and I found that, and I, I, this is just a blanket overview, but I found that O blood types uh, are said to not digest coconut oil very well. And mm. that led me onto the O blood type diet. Yes. Now, out of everything that I've read, I love the O blood type diet because every, all the foods that I've ever eaten in my life or, or haven't been attracted to in my life shows up like 99% of my foods uh, for my blood type. And it's just spot on. If, mm. I, if I'm tuning in and listening to my body, I'd always been a meat eater. Do you know, O mm. blood types have higher mm -hmm. acidity, you know, there's higher acidity in the gut so we can um, break down the meat easier. Coconut oil, no go zone. However, take the blanket rule off. I believe mm. everybody is an individual. There will be some O blood types that don't like meat and can digest coconut oil. I, I, I feel like it's really important to tap into our own bodies and, and feel what the body likes and doesn't like. But yeah, that was just something that I um, love to see that, hey, there's a reason I don't like mm. this food or there's a reason that I put weight on when I eat this food. So yeah. Absolutely. And you nailed it. A big part of what I do, I've actually got three elements to eating well, and it's intuitive, conscious, and aligned. So when you're intuitive to the foods that you want to eat, that you feel like eating in that moment, when you're conscious to the times that you're hungry, you're then aligning with the woman that you desire to be. So how that breaks down is how I choose to live my life each day and how I uh, empower my clients to do the same. It's just like you said, what do you feel like eating? What does your body respond well to? When you're walking through the supermarket, what fruits and vegetables and produce are you drawn to? And you'll find that it is within what works for our body. So there is science behind it, but more than that, it's intuition. And it's just like you said, listening in, feeling into what you feel like. Um, for, for the last couple of months, we haven't been preparing and eating red meat at home and it feels good. I've been doing salmon and chicken and sometimes just eggs or quinoa for our protein. Loads of salads, loads of vegetables. <clears throat> and it's a real open dialogue between my partner and I when I'm about to cook dinner for us. And I'll say, right, babe, we've got mushrooms, courgette, this, that, peas, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking of doing X, Y, Z. And he's like, mm, yeah, can you add some of this into it? Perfect. So when I come to serve up our meal, it's everything that we want because we've listened to that intuition in the moment. So rather than me following any specific type of way of eating, I would say that it's a, a whole food, slightly higher fat, lower in the carbohydrates, because we find our carbohydrates in fruits and vegetables. And that really allows us to fuel our bodies well and stay at our optimum weight where we're feeling good. Do you eat your carbohydrates at a certain time of the day, Danny, or just, again, intuitively? No, I, I have... One thing that I do try and do is have my protein, my fats and my carbs, which is salads or vegetables in my meal and snack. So in the morning I'll do, I call it a loaded smoothie. And honestly, it's like a chocolate thick shake of amazingness. I look forward to breakfast every day and it's a plant-based protein powder. I have a chocolate one. It's uh, frozen blueberries, a handful of spinach. I've got a greens powder to get my vitamins and minerals in there. I do coconut cream, peanut butter for my fats. And what else goes in there? And then sometimes if I've got coconut water, I do that. Otherwise, it's just water. So it's my protein, my fats, and my carbs all in one, and it tastes phenomenal. And for me and for my clients, I suggest, and I always say I suggest it, try it, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But when I suggest and they try, they find it sustains them really beautifully throughout the day. And that's what a lot of my women want because they're busy and they need to have that energy sustained. Yeah, nice. Thank you for sharing that. No worries. So how to overcome your sabotaging? Yeah, your sabotaging. <laughs> mm, pretty much that's it. So we have that self-sabotage in us, unfortunately. The conscious mind is like, all right, we're getting up on a Monday. We've had an okay weekend, but we're getting up Monday. We're going to go to the gym. We're going to eat well. We're not going to have alcohol until Friday. And our subconscious mind is like, no, you're not. <laughs> we're going to have some wine tonight. You don't need to get up to the gym, turn the alarm off, just snooze it, you're fine. And that's because the subconscious mind likes us to keep us on that path that we've always been doing that doesn't serve us. And so when we make that radical change, we've got to get that conscious mind buy-in. 
So what I do is a lot of mindset work and setting intentions and creating that vision of the woman that you desire to be and how she wants to feel and some descriptions and really embody that feeling so that when you are getting up for the alarm and your subconscious is like, no, no, you look at your little uh, mantra on your phone or something by your bed and go, no, I've got my goals and my intentions and my vision. I'm getting up and I'm doing. So really it's not, it's not that we've got terrible willpower. It's just that our subconscious mind is so much stronger than that conscious mind. So we've got to get its buy-in. It's like just tricking it into going, oh, actually this feels good. Okay. Let's, let's go along with a conscious mind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right into self-mastery at the moment. I love that self mastery. And you know, I've actually just started using the word master in my um, language when I'm talking to my clients because it is mastering health and body. What does that look like to each of the individuals? I love that. Yeah, I do too. I work in the mindset space as well. And gorgeous. Just, just have got into this self mastery. Actually, I'm reading um, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And oh, yeah, really brilliant. I don't know how it hasn't crossed my path beforehand. Maybe I just wasn't ready to read it before. That's exactly it. I'm a firm believer in that. Things crop up exactly at the right time. It's perfect. Okay, it is so perfect for me right now. And he talks about he talks a lot about self mastery in there. So yeah, that's come into my vocabulary as well. And love um, it. Yeah, because when we can get that, we I guess when you're talking about the unconscious mind and the conscious mind, then we don't let the unconscious mind dominate. Mm -mm. And boy, does it try. Oh, so oh. much so. So, so much so. Well, one of the prime directives, um, I'm sure you're aware of this, is that to protect us. And so... Mm, exactly. We, yeah, when we have change, it's like, uh-uh. No, 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 this is too scary. Yeah, you're safe here. Just stay here yes. in this old way of being. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. I'm with you. I so hear you on that. It's, <laughs> it's so interesting. And again, I've, I've fairly recently started this journey of moving into the mindset because when I first started out, is this excited holistic nutrition coach. It was about the food plan and there we go. I've, I've worked out your macros and your, the foods that you enjoy and off we go. And then we get in touch the next week and how did it go? They're like, terrible, I didn't do it. And I'm like, but why? It's all here for you. So naturally my coaching is just, it's a fraction food and it's a whole lot mindset. I believe, yeah, I believe mindset is so, so important it's because once, once we can, step into that self mastery space then we can tap into the heart space mm. the heart space the truth and the alignment uh until we do that i think it's just like yeah autopilot I speak a lot that's about. it that's it and i liked how you were talking about this collective consciousness and and i agree with you i'm seeing maybe it's who i'm following on instagram and social media but i'm seeing so much more of this collective rise in just changing how we go about things and i i feel like our next generation is so lucky with what they're going into like yeah, kids are going to be born into, you know, going to school and meditating and all of these things that we didn't learn when we were kids. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, paradigms certainly are shifting. And I look forward to the day that it shifts in schools. That, Absolutely. Yeah, that's really interesting. My 15-year-old son has been raised to have an opinion. He's been raised to challenge things that he doesn't uh, believe in. And he's been raised to do what feels good for him as well. So Beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting to see because he doesn't conform to the schooling system. Mm. And that has been interesting to witness. And when I look at his values and his belief systems and where he sits, it's like, I, I hear you. I feel you, you know, I feel like in that space that there are like, it's an old system. It's an old mm. paradigm. It doesn't, we don't fit it anymore. And when we have these amazing young children and young adults now coming through the schooling system, they don't fit the mold anymore. No, no, no. it doesn't work that way. So I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of teens are, and a lot of young children are really entrepreneurial these days. And absolutely. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I didn't fit into the school system either. When I was at college and we were going to go to uni at my tutor sat down and said, right, what are you going to do at university? I said, I just want to dance. <laughs> I want to dance professionally. And I said, well, don't be silly. That's not going to be a career. And you know what? I showed them that it was my career for six years. And yeah. I actually end up on their board of, this is what Danny's doing. She's dancing. So I was like, I told you. Yeah. So, and, yeah. Go. <laughs> and I was just going to say, it just shows that I really didn't conform into that, you know, the, the system of you've got to get that degree and it's got to be academic and you know, I'm, I've got, I think I've got intelligence, but ask me to sit an exam. I'll probably fail it. 
You know? And that's, that's it because what we're learning is not even relevant really anyway, mm. like in that system, it's not anymore. And yeah, I'm so excited for uh, the day when it comes. And I, and I hope I get to see that day in my life. Me too. Me yeah. too. But the thing is you're seeing it with your son, which sounds phenomenal that he's got his own belief system and it's one that he's created. That's not been passed down from you and school and others. It's he's forming his own. He sounds phenomenal. He is a phenomenal human. Oh, amazing. He certainly is. <laughs> He's got a very strong opinion on how things Love it. should be in his world. And um, uh, yeah, I admire him a lot. He teaches awesome. me so much. Amazing. Yeah. All right. So living with vitality. Mm. Do you know, vitality is a word that has stuck with me since before Danny Vitality was even beginning. And when I ask women about what vitality means to them, the outcome or the end is all the same. It's sparkly eyes. It's floating down the street. It's absolutely owning who we are. Joy in life, unapologetically us, having fierce boundaries and non-negotiables that set up our day. That to me is living with vitality. There's no restriction. There's no shoulds. And it's just women empowering women to be exactly who they are. So that's, that's what it is about for me. So that when I started moving into the coaching space, vitality just had to kick in because we've all got a story, Alicia. Mine is I was in that rat race of life, punishing myself at the gym because I didn't really know what to eat. I wasn't getting the results. So I'd have a glass of wine after work and then I'd go to the gym to work it off. And then I'd go to the gym in the morning to work off the chocolate I had after the wine and so on. And I was miserable. So when I found a, a way of eating and exercising that actually worked for me, I suddenly found this phenomenal vitality and it was infectious. I felt on fire and I had women literally stopping me in the street saying, what do you do? I need some. And that's when I said to myself, okay, I need to actually start doing this properly. So I upskilled, got my qualifications, just went. In fact, I started going even before I was qualified and maybe one person asked me what qualification I've got. It doesn't matter. I'm getting results. And that is the best qualification in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what does, when I say vitality, what does it bring up for you? Is there, is there anything that I didn't kind of cross off in that? What actually came up for me was that I recently did a dancing Eros retreat. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. And so everything you just said was like dancing Eros, dancing Eros, dancing oh, Eros. Gorgeous. <laughs> like, every- how did you feel during it? Yeah, incredible. It was actually, there was a shifting point for me in that space. And I haven't spoken about this yet uh, on my platform. Um, I may before this video goes up, but as of today, I haven't spoken about it. Mm -hmm. What I found in that space was everything you just described in the vitality space came for me. I don't even know. It was an eight day retreat and it might've come around day five. Mm -hmm. And, and what happened for me was that I actually shifted into, and now I thought I'd done this, until I realized I, I mm. hadn't, I actually shifted into total feminine energy. And oh, yeah, and not just, oh yeah, I'm in my feminine space. Mm. It was something happened in our process um, on this specific day. And all of a sudden, like everything in me shifted. And I went outside and I was like, the, the trees were different. And the, like I walked, this is so, this is so funny. I walked outside and I'm like, I could just have sex with the tree right now. Oh, I like, love I, it. Yeah, I was looking at these leaves and they were so erotic and beautiful. And then mm. the plants, they just, I could feel the energy in that. And I, I, just, feel, I feel like that's um, the connection with Mother Earth. Mm. And so from that space, everything else around me, like my food, I was eating it and it was, there was so much pleasure in that. And then uh, while I was walking, there was so much juiciness in that and there was a slowness and everything you're describing like you know I'm, I probably looked 10 years younger at that mm. point in time as well it was just there was so much vitality and I believe that I tapped into yeah into mother earth by tapping into that feminine space so yeah. um, it was really remarkable and to carry that to carry that out of there um, yeah things have definitely shifted for me for that vitality space 100% that's beautiful. And you know, Mother Earth plays a big part in what I do and, and how I help ground myself too. I am blessed to have literally three minutes walk from my house, the Royal Botanic Gardens in Melbourne. So yeah. just get lost in it, set up a blanket, lie on the grass, just do a little loop, whatever it is, just ground my feet in the grass and just head back to my home. And my eyes are just different. Everything is just alive. It feels phenomenal. So I totally get that. 
it's amazing experience yeah it was such a beautiful experience Mm. and i i feel like it's amazing uh and women in particular i i feel don't get this a lot of the time Mm. is that just five minutes can totally recharge your soul. It's like autopilot. It's like, I don't have time for that. It's like, make, make time, <laughs> you know? know, by making time, you'll think clearer, you'll feel better. You'll vibrate at a higher, higher frequency. You'll attract more into your life. It's so important. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? But that I'm too busy comes up so much. And yeah, we are too busy. But like you said, that five minutes is going to create so much space. And it doesn't have to be anything radical. It could be listening to your favorite song as you're getting ready and dancing around your bedroom or enjoying a cup of tea in the morning light and just staring out to some, something beautiful, reading your favorite book or a podcast or anything, anything that sets your soul on fire. A big one for me when I was in the rat race in um, New Zealand was driving to work. Literally, my windows like, woo, woo, with this song that I was playing, I'd be like raging in my car because it would set me up for my day. And it's vital. It literally is vital to get that vitality. And yeah. a lot of women are missing that. And that's a big thing that I encourage women to start working with me is bringing back that self-care no matter when it is. I'm the same with every single one of my coaching clients. I do a 28-day program with them and every single one of them have a daily self-love ritual to do. Gorgeous. And, and do it, they choose this ritual? Yeah, that's I'm just going to add that. So I don't ever believe in telling somebody what to do. So no. it will be a suggestion and then mm. for them, it's something that they, they need to do. And I really want to make that clear here as well. Just bring this up. Uh, I find that we can do things like go to the gym or like mm. go swimming or I don't know, whatever you want, yoga. But a lot of the time I find that it's not enjoyable for, mm. for women. So I feel it's so important that finding something you love, if you don't like running, if you're running all the time and it's a big effort for you, cut that shit out. Don't do it. <laughs> exactly. Why is madness? Why would you do it? Yeah, it is madness. Yeah. Go explore. Go see what you love to do. That's uh, it. What I've also found, and I think this is so beautiful, the soul alerts you of what it wants to do, just like it alerts you of the food it wants to eat, the body, mm. just like... Um, yeah, in, in what exercise, yet we don't listen. And then and the example of that is that I kept having um, go back to Bikram yoga. It would come up literally for probably 12 months oh. before I went back to Bikram yeah. yoga. And someone said to me one day, that's your body telling you that's what it needs right now. Mm. It's, it's like it doesn't just pop in there for, oh, yeah, that's like a good idea. It's like this is your body telling you that. So if something's coming up for you constantly and you're not listening to that, start listening and you'll find joy will just radiate from that. Absolutely. And it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because everyone is on their own journey. And for a very, very long time, I wasn't listening to those subtle whispers that my soul was giving me until it literally shook me and said, you're going to listen. And so <laughs> I listened. I had to. There was no, there's no way out. And as soon as I did, oh my gosh, life just got so much better. I actually posted a photo on Instagram earlier. I've painted my nails. It's, it's self-care. So in between client sessions, I just painted my nails and I said, this is my self-care and it makes me feel good. And so now I look at my pretty gray nails and I'm happy. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's the little things. It doesn't, it doesn't take much. And it's, it's listening to what your body and what your soul needs, not pushing through. I fully agree with that. Yeah. And, and then when we can do that, the resistance stops. Yeah. Yes. Right. Mm. And I'm a big procrastinator with resistance in building the business because it, you, it's very confronting. There's no hiding from yourself. But as soon as you kind of surrender and go, okay, I'm listening. What do I need in this moment? Trust. It always comes up and it always happens and you're always okay. You always are. That yeah. trust, that surrender, that has been a passion of mine to master over, mm. over the last 12 months. And you know, when I feel myself restrict, it's like, just let go. That's it. Just let go because I am always looked after. That's it. Mm. And you brought something up in me just then as well. It's not the trusting because we talked about that. It's the resisting. Oh, I had something as you were saying that and it's gone. It might come up again. Surrender. <laughs> Was it surrender? Oh, Yes, yeah. just surrendering to what is. So when you resist, sorry, restrict and your body's like, oh, it's catching that and going, okay, what am I feeling right now? Because so often we go through life um, kind of subconsciously 
for example, when you bring it back to food, a woman will open her fridge door maybe 10 times and she's not hungry and she's coming and going. It's like, what are you doing? Just be conscious and go, like, shock yourself out and go, you're not hungry. Step away from the fridge. What do you need to do instead? And so it's when you notice that your body is doing something and your mind is telling you something, it's like, okay, what is actually happening here? Let's just dissect for a moment. And as soon as you call it out, you're like, oh, well, that's not what I think. This is my subconscious playing tricks on me again. Have yeah. autopilot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dangerous thing. <laughs> yeah. And where we're, where we're stuck until we uh, decide to become more conscious. I think it's, um, that sounds so simple yet. I know. But yeah, autopilot's such an interesting place to be. Um, mm. Mm. And, and that takes time sometimes, you know, to shift, just continue in that space. I think calling yourself on your own stuff is really beautiful and catching, catching yourself like that's, I, I love catching myself out on my own bullshit. You know, yeah. like, it feels good, doesn't it? It's kind of empowering like the Jekyll and Hyde going on. <laughs> it's like, uh, no, hang on. You thought that a while back. This is not you now. This is not the woman that you are now. Get rid of yeah. that shit. Yeah. And do you know what's so powerful is that when you've got a friendship group or my partner and I do this a lot, we can really gently call each other out on our past patterns and go, hang on, this isn't you. And you're like, fuck, I'm, that's not me. I'm sorry, yeah. but I didn't mean that. And you move on and girlfriends do it as well. But, you know, I've tried it with a girlfriend that's not been in the same journey as me and she's got offended because that ego comes into play to protect because she's scared. And it's, it's just a different path that we, you know, we're on our own journey and it will happen in our own time. If it happens, I hope it does, but sometimes it might not. Yeah. And that's perfect too. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I am curious about the anchor of desire. Is this something you came up with? Ooh, it is. It is. And it was such a beautiful kind of journey in itself. I actually can't remember how it came about I just remember being on an airplane and I always seem to think a lot because you know I was traveling from the UK um, back to Melbourne after my sister's wedding so I had a long time on my own to think and I just started um, getting out my journal and just started drawing and writing and what it is that sets me apart from a lot of the other nutritionists and dietitians out there and in the space of holistic nutrition and I realized that it's it's not the food that the women are eating. It's the, the way that they are thinking about the food that they're eating and the decisions that they're making for themselves. And without even putting it into a name, we were creating the anchor of desire in our sessions. So on one side of the anchor is your intentions. So what you want to achieve, how you want to feel. And on the other side of that anchor is the woman that you desire to be. So we go through a big journaling process of how she feels, how she looks, how she makes other people feel, how would other people describe her, what are her values. So you create this phenomenal vision and then you hold yourself to this higher power of yours. And so these two elements become the anchor of desire so that every time that subconscious tries to trick us into staying where we are, we've got such a strong anchor that it cements that change moving forward. And I worked with an amazing graphic designer. She's intuitive. And I said to her, I have got this vision in my head and I can see it so clearly. And I need you to help me get it from here onto paper. And she did it. And it's actually now part of my, um, my free download that I'd love to share with your ladies. So um, as soon as we did maybe three edits, she sent me the last one. I was like, oh my God, that's it. I feel it. You've done it. And so that's how it became. So I, I just took what I was doing naturally and made it into a thing that I do in terms of living with vitality. So it's creating your anchor of desire. Yeah, that, that is so beautiful. Thank you. And yeah, I would, it feels good. Yeah, good. And I would love for you to share that with the audience. I can Thank put a you. link. I can put yes. a link on all of the social media for you. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. You're so, so welcome. Oh, so much juiciness. Oh, it's been amazing. I've loved talking to you and just exploring and just letting the conversation go wherever it needs to go in the time because it's just perfect. It's my favorite thing to do. I love where conversations can go and mm. yeah, they just do their own thing, don't they? Whatever needs to come up, comes up. Absolutely right. Danny, is there anything else that you would love to share with the audience? What else would I love to share? Um, do you know what? I think the biggest thing that we've touched on today, Alicia, is just lifting 
lifting that restriction and that it's okay and that we are allowed because as soon as we lift that restriction on us, every other element in our lives just improve. So this is predominantly around food. But as, again, as soon as you lift that restriction on food, then we, our demeanor just becomes happier and we are more unapologetic in who we are because we believe that we are allowed. So just try lifting that restriction in whatever area of your life it affects in that moment, what it makes you think of, and see how your life improves. I'd love to add to that as well. If something doesn't feel good, let that go. Oh, my God, big time. And that's actually one of my, an my mantras. I choose to feel good. Yeah. Danielle Laporte um, has the book, The Desire Map. Have you read that Love one? It. I haven't yet. I've, I've just started looking at her um, images on Instagram and I've loved what I've read about her desire map so far. She's one of my favorite women of all time. She's just so centered within herself. Mm. And in, in that book, she talks about how do you want to feel and mm. how do you want to feel it's uh, for me this is how I took this on is um I used to don't anymore but I used to love coca-cola and mm. this was when I did my NLP training 18 months ago I stopped drinking coke altogether from that mm -hmm. um so um I would remember that I wanted to give it up it was just before that I wanted to give it up and I'd if I went to go and buy one I'd say to myself how do I want to feel right now amazing because I'd have guilt because I wanted to give it up. So I'd be like, mm. if I, yeah. And then that's that go into that pattern and program again of not feeling very good about yourself. So, you know, it's, and the way that that works is how do I want to feel right now? Well, I feel okay to have that, or uh, I want to feel healthy and good in my body. Mm. So e either way is perfect. It doesn't mean how do I want to feel? It doesn't mean you don't have to have it. It's just a conscious choice then of, okay, do I want to feel like shit right now? Or do I want to, will I feel good if I drink it? Yes. And that's and it. Yeah. And whichever way it goes is perfect. So I love that because it's just taking a step back and bringing the consciousness into that decision. So it is the right decision for you. Absolutely. Yeah. She's lovely. She again, and she's so unapologetic. I just adore her message and her voice as well. I could listen to her forever. Yeah, a very sexy voice she's got. Yeah, and her and Abraham Hicks. I love her meditations. Me too. Yeah, 100%. Abraham's, mm. yeah, phenomenal. Beautiful. Awesome. Danny, where can everyone find you? Well, I'm on social media. So I have a Facebook page, Danny Vitality. I've also got a website, dannyvitality.com. And I've also got a beautiful space just for women. It's a private group and it's the Vitality Room. And we just empower each other in staying healthy and lifting each other up and making great choices for ourselves. And if there is a moment of, oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what's going on, then we just jump right in and we support. So it's, it's a really beautiful space. Fantastic. And I will pop those links also through that social thank media. Thank you. Well. You are so welcome. Thank you so, so much for joining us in this space today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been amazing. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. And thank you to each and every single one of you that have joined us for this episode today of Behind Closed Doors. I'm just going to do that again. My partner's phone went off. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to each and every single one of you who have joined us today in this space. If you haven't yet subscribed to iTunes, please click the subscribe button. If you prefer YouTube, hit the subscribe button there. Each week on a Wednesday, we have a new podcast come out. That's Wednesday, Australia time. If you would love some more inspiration in your day, then I highly recommend you hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. I will catch you next week. Till then, much love. Bye.